Yeah. Too soft. Да. Ukraine has begun to seize the initiative at the front and Russia's problems are rapidly worsening. Russian Z-War correspondent and imperialist Maxim Kalashnikov openly spoke about this in his blog. He noted that the tactics of the RF, Armed Forces Command, had increased the acute shortage of manpower at the front. The offensives on Kharkov and Pokrovsk had worsened Russia's situation. Now, apparently, mobilization was unavoidable. Do you understand that we are actually losing the strategic initiative now? The Ukrainian armed forces invaded Kursk. The entire system broke down. The principle of a ceasefire that we will depend on the situation on the ground demarcate. In the Kursk region, the ulcer is hurting and festering. We don't have the strength to drive the enemy out of there. Why did they go to Kharkiv, to Volchansk? They only wasted their troops. This is now having an effect. And the advance on Pokrovsk has also stopped. The price of rapid movement there is huge losses. There is no strength now, guys. The troops are very exhausted. We need to make a decision. If we do nothing, we can end up with very unpleasant consequences at the front, Kalashnikov said. He admitted that the highest military political leadership of Russia is very reluctant to announce a new wave of mobilization as it fears severe political and economic consequences. They really don't want mobilization. I understand how our leadership fears this. They really don't want it. Remembering the not very good experience of autumn 2022, especially since mobilization will have to be carried out with the economy and state administration not mobilized. We need to decide. We need to decide. The strategic scales have begun to tip in favor of our enemy, the Z-War correspondent emphasized. Ukraine's defense forces have reported that the Russians have deployed soldiers with no combat experience to bolster their assaults in the city of Vovchansk on the Kharkiv front. The 4th Volunteer Reconnaissance and Assault Brigade named after Alexander Nevsky was deployed on this front. They suffered quite heavy losses and now soldiers from the 128th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade are arriving to reinforce them as well as other units. However, the latest reports say that the units being brought in for assault actions in Vovchansk have received rather poor training. These servicemen have never seen combat before. It is our understanding that this newly arrived personnel is a mobilization resource raised by Russia. It is not yet known for certain whether these are former prisoners or representatives of other countries, said Vitali Sarantsev, spokesperson for the Kharkiv Operational Strategic Group of Forces of Ukraine. Experts from the Institute for the Study of War ISW have noted minor advances by Russian forces in Kursk Oblast in areas that are not fully controlled by Ukraine's defense forces. However, they have emphasized that Russian troops are likely to face greater difficulties in further attempts to counter-attack in areas still under Ukrainian control. Russian forces continue counter-attacking throughout the Ukrainian salient in Kursk Oblast on the 12th of September, but made only marginal gains likely due to continued Ukrainian offensive operations and defensive counter-attacks in the area, the ISW said. The Russian Defense Ministry reported that Russian forces have retaken 10 settlements south and southwest of Korenevo since launching counter-attacks on the night of the 10th to the 11th of September. These settlements include Apanasovko, Byakovo, Vishnevka, Viktorovka, Vnez Zapnoy, Gordivka, 
Krasnuktia Briskoy, Obukovka Snagost, and 10th October. However, all of these areas fall within previously claimed limits of Russian advances and the ISW has not visually confirmed the recapture of any settlements other than parts of Snagost and Krasnuktia Briskoy. Additional geo-located footage published on the 12th of September shows Ukrainian infantry crossing into southwestern parts into the southwestern part of Tetkino, around 40 kilometers southwest of the Ukrainian salient in Kursk Oblast. Further footage reveals Ukrainian armored vehicles and infantry bypassing Russian Dragon's Teeth anti-tank defenses near the Russian-Ukrainian border southwest of Noviput without facing resistance, suggesting that Ukrainian forces have advanced in the area and that Russian forces were not ready to use these obstacles to stop cross-border attacks. Russian sources also reported continued Ukrainian assaults near Noviput, Medvedzai, Snagost, Olgovka and Fanaseevka. Russian forces have so far advanced in areas of Kursk Oblast that Ukrainian forces were not yet fully controlling nor attempting to control and Russian forces will likely face more difficulty when counter-attacking further into areas of the salient where Ukrainian forces do have control. Ukrainian forces have not attempted to consolidate positions everywhere in their salient in Kursk Oblast and it is likely that Ukrainian forces had fewer consolidated positions in forward areas at the edges of the salient where Russian forces have recently advanced. Russian counter-attacks against better prepared and consolidated positions in territory where Ukrainian forces exert control will likely be far less successful than the counter-attacks Russian forces launched on the 10th to 11th of September. The U.S. Department of Defense has assessed the counter-offensive actions of Russian troops in Kursk Oblast, Russia, calling them marginal. So, you know, what we have seen is Russian units beginning to try to conduct some type of counter-offensive in the Kursk region. He said that these actions are marginal, Pentagon spokesman General Patrick Ryder said. However, Ryder added that the Pentagon is monitoring the developments.